I will call the meeting of the Board of Selectmen to order at 7 o'clock p.m. on Monday, May 1st, 2023. Um, and before we go into the Pledge of Allegiance, just a roll call, in case anyone doesn't know anyone. Roland, start with you. Hi. I'm Roland. <laughs> hey, see? I think I'm voting already. <laughs> he already really wants the meeting to be quick to tonight. Yeah, Roland Very Barrett. <laughs> Richard Bremelst. Andrew Allward. Jennifer Gill. Peter Caruso, Town Administrator. Matthew Mealy. Okay. And now we'll stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. So new business. So consideration of candidates for appointment through 6-30-2024 of Council on Aging. I see all the candidates are here, which is great. So, um... And we have reviewed this, and I've reviewed the, my information many, many, many times. So how does the board want to handle this? Do we just want to have the three of them come up and ask some questions, or one at a time? I don't anticipate any kind of issues with doing it all at once, but if we want to yeah, do it one at a time. Yeah, we can do it all at once, I think. Okay. You know? yeah. All right, so um, Cecil Gomes, Richard Herter, Jeff Pettit, if you want to come up here, we can get you another chair. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're coming too. <laughs> right. Thank you, Peter. Okay. That's right. Okay. Well, you're a that way it's less say. scary yeah. for everybody. This is a highly contested uh, seat here. It's, huh? it's a very powerful position. Wow. So, and people are all very interested. I'm, I'm getting nervous just for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, what I'll just go this way. So, Jeff, if you want to tell us a little bit about yourself and why you would like to be considered. Sure. Um, I live on Chestnut Hill Road, 442. I've been here for 13 years. And um, I've been <clears throat> I've been on the con different, different councils in town here, and I kind of decided that you know, there's an opening for the Council on Aging, and the majority of our population is seniors, so I have extra time, and I have a lot of knowledge, and figured I could help them out. Okay. They had a meeting, so I went to it. <laughs> Cecil. Okay. Um, my name is Cecile Gomes, and I live on 93 Kempton, and I've been here most of my life. Um, and yes, uh, I wanted to help out as much as I could with the seniors because I am one and um, but at the time that I put the application in I wasn't having medical issues and I am now mm. and so uh, I felt it was better for me to step back okay. and let somebody else that can put the time in where I couldn't okay so but I would like to if there is another opening along the way and my my health improves and you know issues like that go away then I would be like I would like to be considered you know to help out with the seniors okay great and Richard you want yeah Richard Herto I live at 8 Rondon Road I've lived in the town of Millville for over 40 years I've been on various boards the planning board for over 30 years capital planning trustees for the park, uh, and uh, I've been involved with the seniors. Uh, I'm president currently, and I was president in the past, uh, but I stepped down as president when they had closed the club during the COVID. Uh, now I'm back in because there was talk of them terminating the senior club, so I stepped back in because there's some good people here in town that I would hate to see the club disband because of that. Uh, I thought I'd join the COA only because I was on the COA in the past and um, I've got a lot of knowledge on the current laws and I think I can do a lot of good for the seniors. Okay. Does anyone have any questions for anyone? Well, I, I know last week we, we were <clears throat> concerned about, you know, doing maintenance and things of that nature in the in the senior center mm -hmm. and um, just being in construction myself I know that you can't especially a town building and really any any public or private building you can't do any type of work unless you were personally 
or if your company is, is insured and licensed to do so. Um, that's against the uh, Mass General Laws, and it's all, it, it is in the uh, electrical code and building code that, um, and I'm assuming plumbing too, I don't know the plumbing code, but <laughs> that you need all these cert certificates of insurance and licenses to to do that so that's one thing that needs to be kept in mind um, it's great if somebody wants to help we will accept any donation of uh, labor and or material for for a specific um, town um, entity but at the same time they do need to be licensed and insured yeah garage keepers policy I think that's what you're referring to y yeah and yeah and uh, so, I wonder what the cost of that would be. I know we're self-insured here, but I wonder if there's a supplemental policy or excessive policy we can grab. I don't know that, but people are insured who are on committees and so forth. You know, for yeah. officers' liability and that sort right. of stuff. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the, the only comment I would make is it's not like you're filling a position to have. Be a worker bee, right. banging nails or what you know, whatever. You're looking for a leadership position. I, you, I think so. Do you know if it's if you can advise in that role without those licenses instead of like specifically working on it? So like if you're on the COA no. and you're hmm. like just giving advice no. or going recommendations out to look for those. Well you can make a recommendation that that a, a door needs to be replaced because it's, you know, compromised, yeah. you know, structurally. You can't do the work. Right. Somebody licensed and insured needs to be right. doing the work. Just want to clarify. Mm -hmm. so. Somebody that would hold the harm, the town harmless. Like in, in, yeah. On your own property, you can pull a permit for building electrical, not plumbing, and you can't you can do the work as long as you are the only people that live there. If it's a multifamily, you cannot. And then also the same with a commercial or public uh, building. So, Jeff, do you have licenses and insurance, or one or just the other? Or Oh, thank you. Um, I have a bunch of licenses. I'm not. I made it clear when I was in there. I was going to just try and help out. You know, yeah. anything that requires a license. No, I just want to keep you stuff. you from being liable. I'm, if you help, I, you know, I, I've been in the business for a little over forty years. So, um, if you help out and do something, and yeah. something happens, God forbid, right? Yeah, yeah, liability. The town will say, "Oh, that's all right. It was Jeff. Don't worry about it." The insurance company doesn't feel that way. <laughs> they want blood all the time, and they'll go after you, and you can lose your house. So, the, really, the insurance protects the uh, you, the, the the tradesman, but it also protects the town or, or business or home. You know? Well, I don't have insurance, but okay. I've been a certified mechanic. It first came up when I said I'll take a look at the senior van. Yep. You know, maybe saving some money just on maintenance for that yep. kind of stuff. And then we got into some of the septic stuff, and um, I don't have like I don't know what they need for a septic license or anything, you know. But right. I don't want to do anything that's going to certainly cause any kind of liability yeah. or any kind of problems. So as as far as like the senior van, we'll say changing oil and all that, and just routine PMI maintenance. Yeah. I would check just before you do touch it that you do or don't need it. Well, I would say the the safety issues like the brakes and stuff like this. Yeah. You would certainly most likely have to have something right to protect yourself really more yeah. than anything yeah because the insurance companies never lose they go after any anybody they can yeah yeah so something to really think about sure and i believe richard you said you had insurance last week i cc'd all the selectmen including yeah. peter my construction superintendent's <laughs> license unrestricted that I've had oh, it's, in, it's in here Okay. Yeah. We, so that's I just the, want it to be on audio. <laughs> I have, uh, just wanted to talk. Nobody at home is going to read all this. <laughs> okay. It's not exciting. <laughs> no, you're right. But it's, uh, it's, it's not easy to come by. Yeah, right. Okay. Oh. Okay. Oh, I've got all kinds of crazy insurance myself, so it's... Could I just say one of thing? Of course, please. Um, I just find it nice that a young man... Um, is offering his services 
to come onto the council. I mean, I don't know either. One. I don't, Richard, Richard. I know of you, but I don't know you personally. I have nothing against you, or I don't know Andrew Pettit either. But I've always, I've, yeah. you know, Jeff. I've been saying for a long time that was it, Andrew? No, Jeff. Jeff, I'm sorry. Well, there's proof you don't know. <laughs> yeah. I, I, it's true. I don't know him. <laughs> well, you know, we've said a long time. People are ages now. It's time for the younger ones to step yeah. forward and to see that he's doing that, willing to come onto a board, you know, for the for the seniors and, and help out and do what he can. I think it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. I wish more young young people from the town would fill in these positions mm -hmm. that are that are empty. Okay. Yes. I just wanted to say, I mean, with Jeff, we weren't looking for any free labor. No, of course. Well, no, no, not at all. But no, it could be free or reduced rate. It doesn't well, matter. We're going out no. for bids and things. When something needs to be done or somebody tells us that something is wrong, we've got so many bills right now on fire suppression systems and so forth means nothing to us. We could get one. They could tell us it's going to cost $3,800 and this is what's wrong. We have no idea. So we don't know where to go or what to do. I mean, we just want to compare. We want somebody with some knowledge. I mean, the knowledge would be wonderful for us. I don't know about you, Larry. Um, I don't know much about that. <laughs> I don't know either. But, I mean, just to take a look at the drawings to find out where the septic system cover was. That was great because he uncovered it. A town, a town company came and took care of that for us at half price and didn't cost us any more. Didn't have to come out there and bring his own shovels and so forth. I mean... It's, we're looking for knowledge. We're looking for a fresh approach to things that we might be able to do differently. So, as I've said before in the past, it's, it's, the mechanical stuff is all well and good, but the main goal is the seniors. Yeah. Whether, sure. it's, whether it's in that building or, in the, or under a tent in someone's backyard, mm -hmm. we got to make sure the seniors <clears throat> are helped as needed. And in any way we can. Um, okay. Any other questions for you? For me? No. No. All right. Looking for a nomination? I, I would like to nominate Richard Hartu. Looking for a second? I'll second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, I will call for the vote. Roland? Aye. Richard? So I think before I vote, I, I want to be clear that the Council on Aging has recommended um, Jeff. Jeff, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to vote nay because I want to go, um, I'm, I'm probably, I want to consider the, the Council on Aging. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Do you want us to s go back to discussion? No, I think that's fair. Okay. <laughs> Andrew? Aye. Jennifer is aye. Matthew? Along the same uh, ideas, Richard, I'm going to vote nay as well. Okay. All right. Well, congratulations, Richard. Thank you. You're welcome. Jeff, thank you for putting your name forward. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Cecil, thank you for coming forward. Um, yes, Larry. <clears throat> Would you clarify for us, going forward, when there's another vacancy, what the proper procedure is going to be? Because this got convoluted in, yep. in what we believe was the proper way to do it. Uh, so what is the procedure yes. going forward? Yep. So first, the resignation needs to be registered with the town clerk. In writing. In writing. Mm -hmm. Signed. She prefers signed and like in person, but I know if there's someone has a health issue or something like that, they would prefer to. She can make exceptions, I guess, but the preference is a letter that's signed that's brought here. Um, so once the vacancy is there, then we would expect some, you know, we make an announcement in our meetings, like, hey, there's these open positions, so make an announcement so people can be well informed of the vacancy and then take in applications. Like our, I mean, people, not application, but you know, send a note, hey, I'm interested, here are some of the, my qualifications, this is how I think I can help. Like it should be pretty. Like that. Nobody says that you can't hold their letters of of intent right now for the next time. No, but what can I meant I was, is, is yeah. it still going to need so you can, uh, an interview by the selectmen, the board of selectmen again, yep. 
Yeah, to me. Well, then, and that's in the so bylaws we, of yeah. Millville that the selectmen are the uh, appointing authority. Right. Also um, in the bylaws in Millville is that all candidates come to the Council on Aging and we make we make a recommendation to the Board of Selectmen. Mm -hmm. Correct. And, when, and so we've done the process according to the bylaws. So are those changing? No. 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 I mean, I'm... So we in, can make a recommendation in the you'll make previous it. nine years that I was a selectman, there was a lot of times that we were given uh, candidates for um, uh, a police officer, uh, a fireman, any of these other boards. Right, paid, and paid we, positions, absolutely. And, and then after us going through more paperwork, mm -hmm. then we would <clears> discuss <throat> with Chief Landry at the time and end up being a different person. I understand, but that's a paid position, and a paid position right. that's on the table. Well, and it's all the same idea, though. It's still, you know. Yes, Richard. Uh, to clarify something, there was a lot of confusion about somebody who resigned from the post, that they have to submit a letter of resignation to the time clerk. clerk. Yep. And that, that that's what caused a lot of confusion. Yep. Uh, that hopefully... You know, in the future, it's well, yeah. You know, so, we so in the future, that. I would just not do any um, interviewing until the letter of resignation yeah. has been received and and documented. Mm -hmm. Then, once that happens, yep. then there's an opening. Then there's technically an opening. Yes, okay. exactly. And I just make otherwise a it's just hearsay. Yes, of course. Um, I know. I'm. <clears throat> I just feel. As a citizen of the town of Melville, mm -hmm. I feel it's sad that the Council on Aging chose a candidate and the Board of Selectmen is overriding that candidate. And I don't think that's fair. The Council on Aging are the ones that are making the rules for their council. And they chose the gentleman they thought would be the best for their position. Mm -hmm. For the Board of Selectmen to over that overrule their vote and nominate someone else as a citizen of the town of Millville, I think is terrible. Okay. So I appreciate that feedback. I'll say and you know, Peter and I were meeting earlier, I didn't think we could really make a bad choice. I know Richard, I know Jeff, and mm -hmm. I don't know you very well, Cecil, but I think that <coughs> you would be a good candidate as well. So I was kind of looking to others maybe to make the recommendation and then I did not think that could, there could be really a bad selection. So I understand your point of view I, that they I, yes. recommended someone and it was it was twice, I think was pointed out last time that they went through the process. Um, so I appreciate that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, I, one big thing I base my decision on is Back, and I can't remember the exact year, around 15 or 16, when I, as a selectman, was part of the reason that, well, not the reason, but lack of funds was the reason, but why the senior center had to close the building. You know, not the, you know, the senior center is always there, um, whether it's in a building or outside, like I said before, but um, why the building had to close, and the Richard, my wife, and some other folks that all got on the COA and figured out a way to reopen that building without any funds from the town. So that is the track record that I'm going with, with Richard. No insult to, to any any other candidate. It's no, but you, you have to remember, too, Paula and Richard Mook here have yeah. a lot to do with why that hall is there. Oh, and I know. Why I know open. exactly why it's there. I, I did a lot of work in that building myself. So, after you know, it first it's, it's not only one one person that deserves credit for that. Paula no. and Richard deserved a lot of credit. No, they 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 were a big part of getting it built. Yes. I'm talking about after after it was built and open and then had to be closed because of lack of funds. Um, that, that was a lot of a lot of not only the senior center, the library, everything. Well, the library. Yeah, it affected whole, everything. Everything. Trash and you name it, it, it was affected. So any non essential and I know <clears> the seniors <throat> are essential, you know, the center, the library is essential for the kids and, and some, some anyone else that wants, you know, to use the center. All the stuff, everything in town is essential. But if you ask the state not so much, 
you know, the, the, the management of the town is the essential funding that has to happen. Hmm. Unfortunately, the live, you know, if they were to take over, the first thing they do is close libraries, senior centers, and anything to that nature because they're only looking for the dollar sign at the end. So, so, and so I do remember that my wife was the treasurer, and they, them, and a whole bunch of other people all got together and reopened that building with without any town money at all, and that was uh, a great thing. <clears throat> All right, so we're gonna put you. Yeah. Yes, please, Andrew. Uh, so I would like. I do appreciate your um, your sentiment. Yep. Um, having been on the receiving end of two recommendations from boards and having been put before the select board and being denied, so I do understand that. But there is a precedent that that has happened. It happened to me twice already. So it's it's not necessarily uncommon. Yeah. So it it's it sometimes happens that different committees have different opinions on who might be the better candidate. That's just how it happened this time. Yeah, but what my my thing was is the Council on Aging, no. Yep. They, that's their board. Well, I mean, they, they know their people. They know what they have to do. They know what their jobs are. Well, one of those the board of select. I know, the board, but the Board of Selectmen, and, you know, I mean, I guess they can go anytime they want to any of the meetings, okay? But um, it's the Council on Aging that have to work together and... Um, I just don't, I can't see overriding their opinion of who they wanted to work with. Well, one of those uh, was the Council on Aging that I was denied on. I was a member, and then I was up for reappointment, and they said that they didn't I remember to. when you were on the Council yeah. on Aging. so <laughs> it happens, and it was the same board, basically. So it happens a lot, so. Okay, well, thank you all for coming this evening. I really appreciate thank it. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so now we will move to new business 3B, the annual town meeting planning and final oh, review, selecting recommendations of remaining articles. Right, and I handed out, Jen, uh, the uh, draft uh, motions that will be done at town meeting. They're being reviewed by council, so the wording might change, but that okay. helps you, guide you to also yep. the warren as well, because that's really, it, it's the motions that makes things happen, yeah. right? Yep. Um, and we have, I'm going to kind of do these together. Also, the budget for the consideration, because I yes. feel like we can't they recommend hand hand. Yeah. The, warrant, the warrant article without looking at the budget. Yep, and so the budget, uh, I handed out just the summary page because I changed two numbers in the detail budget that you've seen last week and what was in your packets again. I, I, one of the numbers I changed was uh, uh, updated the correct number for the OPEB for BMR in the budget. The, no, the correct number for FY24 is an $1,100 increase or thereabouts. So that's what's changed the bottom line. The other thing was I finally got um, the uh, debt service for the Title V number. That doesn't change the bottom line, but it is a line item in the detail that people will vote on. The funding source is in the, identified in the motion of the, uh, the omnibus budget to be coming from the Title V fund. So anyway, I just those are the two numbers changed in the details. I didn't give you the details, I just gave you the summary page. Okay. Okay. All right. So, um, and I put names in what I handed out here for the motions, but those will be tweaked a little bit. Mm -hmm. Spread it around better, but that's just sort of my first pass. Of okay, so it looks like we have to do the recommendation on Article 10. And is that it? That might be it. Yeah, I think so. You did all the other recommendations? The only thing you wanted to revisit, I think, the capital one? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Okay, yeah. Okay, so it's a, Article 7. Yep. So Article 7, just to go back to that one, we recommended it. Um, but the capital stabilization fund is at two hundred and six ish thousand dollars, and so we want to keep it at two hundred thousand. That's a recommendation from the capital planning committee. 
so it's a little slightly over so we don't need to put any money in here we recommended it on others that we sought to take no action we did not recommend them so i don't know if we wanted to take a vote again or it, it doesn't really matter i guess at the end of the day but for consistency i thought we might want to consider taking another vote and not recommending it since for the other articles where we're recommending no action we also did not recommend those okay right makes sense yeah so to be consistent mm -hmm. okay all right so <clears throat> so how i'm going to do that then is i will make a recommendation to recommend and then if you don't want to recommend you by you vote nay if you do want to recommend i okay because i had confusion on that all last right. time <laughs> mm -hmm. so right. i will make a motion to recommend article 7 the capital stabilization fund looking for a second second thank you andrew any further discussion seeing none i'll call for the vote roland nay richard nay andrew nay jennifer is nay matthew nay okay so i'll change that to zero five yeah mm -hmm. just since we're not taking any action on it um okay and then so for the fiscal budget recommend uh article recommendation so i don't know if anyone else had any other yeah. questions on the budget concerns see anywhere we can take there's no more blood left in the rock to pull money out of to, mm -hmm. you know yeah fincom's having their public hearing thursday night i've posted for you all in case there's a quorum so if you yep. choose to show up okay you, you know there's a meeting posted and you can call it to order if there's a quorum of you all may 8th so that that no may 4th that's the okay. public hearing of fincom so thursday night and then the annual town meeting, yes, separately, That's you'll fine. be posted. And whether you want to meet half hour early, and I posted a half hour early, okay. you know, you think about that. Yeah. Right. So anything else on the budget? So I don't recommend, I don't think we should make any other changes at this point because we are a week away. Mm. Um, but I did want to talk about... Um, one of the articles we recommended or did not recommend was on stipends for the school committee. So the school committee and BBT are two that get stipends. Last year, Andrew and I voted no. And this uh, woman came up and she's like, hey, you know, you, you and Andrew voted no. And can you explain that to me? I said, look, I, I just don't think it's fair. They get stipends. Nobody else gets stipends. And she's like, you know, I really wish you would have said that during the meeting. So I don't know if we should hold the, the line items and see, like, I w I'm open to holding them. I'm not gonna take anything out though, because I don't know that's gonna pass. And I will say that if the school committee has to go back and recertify their budget, it's very, a very challenging process. Yep. So <clears throat> I don't expect anything to come of it, and maybe I'll chicken out at town meeting, we'll see. Well, but that was, it's- Because both schools are regionalized. Yeah. We get outvoted by Blackstone, and then yeah. Millville will get outvoted by 12 other towns, but, we can make, make the, make the, you know, maybe we could start a wave. But yeah. yeah. You know, all the towns will hear about it. <laughs> so, yeah. I, that was just. <clears throat> usually, the school committee's like, if we have to do this again, it's really, it's very difficult. And then everyone's like, all right, we'll just leave it. So I'm willing to donate my selecting salary if that helps. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least half. Yeah. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. So I just, yeah. But. Just to clarify, BVT is different than BMR in terms of the way the stipends are handled, right? Right. Millville has in its budget for BVT the stipend of the representative. It's not like it would change the BVT budget right. if Millville yeah. stood against it. Versus the BMR one is B captured in their bu buried in their budget somewhere, <laughs> right? Yeah. And it would be very challenging to take it out. We so only own twenty three percent. So yeah, that's percent. correct. Four and a so half percent. That's right. Yeah. 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 So. We don't even own 25% of the budget, right. so it's hard to... <laughs> so then I won't hold those line items, but I'll just put it out there that if anyone did, I would support that. But it's just it's kind of like we're making things more difficult for us without a big payoff. Like yeah. we are talking about maybe $5,000. It's not... Right. So so I will, no, I will not hold the line items in. I don't even have to chicken out. I can just say that I in this meeting. Um, okay, so then um, for the, so then for the budget, um, 
I, I thought we did pretty well, to be honest. I mean, a deficit of 136,000 is not amazing. I was hoping that with our miniature surplus of 10,000 last year, we were <laughs> making a wave to the um, other in the other direction. I don't know if you all have these sheets. No, I didn't copy those actually. Yeah, I should okay. do that. Yeah. So should, do you want to do that? Yeah. So on that sheet, Peter just shows the in, like the state contribution to the yeah. school budget. So you can see their budget overall went up by like 3%, which is not terrible, but the contribution from the state went up 1%. Yep. And so now we're making up that difference. Yep. And I, um, Dr. DeFalco, we said last meeting, that's, I, when he reminded me of those numbers, that reminded me as well that they want, we're at like a 50.5% contribution. They want us to be at 59% eventually so it looks like they're kind of slow rolling it which is good but in the meantime i think we need to see some changes like in terms of what we spend for the school and even with those changes we might still have a deficit like even if we're like you know what you need to hold your line items but with the changing school the changing state contributions rather <clears throat> So if you look here, it's in the, the second kind of block of numbers. So last year's contribution from the state was $13,776,110. And this year, the state contribution was $13,964,626. So they gave us an increase of $188,516, which is 1.4%. And that's what's hurting us. Yep. If they kept it at the same rate, we might not have any deficit in our budget. So, okay. That's Beacon Hill. I know. <laughs> so that's it. I just wonder why now? Why are they making this change now? And what's what's driving it? Different regime. Yeah. We don't have different agendas. One thing for sure is Massachusetts does not have a revenue problem. Yeah, that's we what I mean. We have a spending problem. Yeah. yeah. Like, so why don't they keep the funding level for the schools the same? You know what I mean? Like, what are we spending money on then instead of schools? It, it's not to going to communities like Millville. It's, you know, it's going to the cities. That's where the, you know, a lot of the funding's yep. going for schools. Yep. So you're, you're dealing with per student rates that don't really increase. You, and, don't track the increase of the costs. Right. They they may increase their budget of three hundred million for education this year, but where one out of three hundred and sixty yes. community yeah. sixty something communities and with our population, it, it's a killer. Yeah. Okay. Well I would say one thing mm -hmm. which is if we could make sure that we could stick to the three percent more closely. Because even though it's only 3.7%, that's $200,000, mm -hmm. yeah. which is more than our deficit. So if we could do that for all the departments, we wouldn't even be close to having a deficit. We'd have a substantial surplus. So, Well, I mean, I, I can go way back to police. They had the Quinn Bill, right, which mm -hmm. was 100% funded by the state. And then all of a sudden, one year they said, all right, you still have to educate these officers, but we're not paying anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that was a killer back then in 2010, I think it was. Unfunded mandate. Yep. 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 So, and they did it not only with the police Quinn bill, it was other stuff. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. lots of stuff. So. Okay. So... <clears throat> Looking for a motion to recommend Article 10, the budget. Second. I need a so oh, motion. Yeah, I motion to uh, accept Article 10, uh, FY24 budget as as presented. Thank you, Roland. Looking for a second. I'll second. Did we beat you this time. Yeah? Oh, I was about to say that. I'll I'll just, just, I was <laughs> 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 Any further discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Roland. Aye. Richard. Aye. Andrew. Nay. Jennifer is aye. Matthew? Aye. All right. Okay. We were having too many 05s and 50s. We were well, looking too you, agreeable. So you thank are you for shaking You are 100% right, though, Andrew, yeah. with yeah. that 0.7%. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. and, and by and large, the departments, it's not a, so much as a thing of if they need it. It's the fact if we have it. 
Yeah. You know, if I'm making a budget for myself, if I don't have it, I just go without. Yep. You know, if I, you know, that means you know sometimes you have to eat crappier food or something like that. But you got to make do with what you have. And to oh, be Friday honest, Friday night pizza. Yeah, and to it's be honest, not upset. With a town budget, it's the simplest budget to create in a sense because year after year you have a pretty stable sense of what you're going to make as a revenue source. Yeah. So it's not like we're surprised that our revenues went up or went up down or whatever. We we know what it's going to be before that. So. Yep. Okay. Great. Um, old business. Really none yeah. at this stage. I still see nothing from departments. Nope. Public forum. We actually have an audience. Anyone public forum? No one wants to say anything? Okay. <laughs> um, announcements, Peter? Anything? Just a reminder, Family Fun Day at BMR is May 13th, 1 to 4 p.m. at the high school. I've seen it on Facebook. I just happen to have the flyer in my, and I'm sure it's on the school website. So <laughs> Whatever would we it's do free. without that Facebook? They have music, food, games, and activities. So weather uh, hopefully will be good. Okay. Um, so your correspondent, so I wrote a letter to Dr. Fitzpatrick and I told him I would read it out loud to everyone just in the interest of transparency. So, and I sent this at 9.57 a.m. on Tuesday, so about 11 hours and 45 minutes after our meeting ended. Um, so it says, good morning, Dr. Fitzpatrick. I wanted to reach out again and apologize in writing in front of Jerry and Peter regarding our exchange last evening. I directed my displeasure toward you, and it should have been to the chair of the school committee. I'll be sure to reach out to him for follow-up. I also see you and Jerry on the email, and I did do that. I also wanted to say there's a word I, I also want to say that if there was a word I could take back, it would be untruthful. That is not the word I meant to say. I honestly don't know if there is a word to express what I wanted to say, but I can explain myself <clears throat> here. In the interest of a positive working relationship and collaboration, you and the chair should have followed up with Peter and myself to make sure that we were satisfied with the closing of the disciplinary process, or at the very least, informed of it. This is the minimum courtesy, in my opinion. In closing, as I have the information I was looking for, I now consider this matter closed. Thank you for attending our meeting this evening. I will also read this email aloud at the next Board of Selectmen meeting on May 1st, 2023, so everyone is aware of my apology and my more accurate sentiment. Best regards, Jennifer Gill. I said I would read it, so I did. Um, okay. We have no minutes, Peter? We have no minutes. It'll be after town meeting. Selectman reports? I have nothing. Richard? Nothing exciting. Should we go over the money in for the motions, for the accounts? I just thought of that, we wrote that down. I guess so, Sure. just out, so for my select, sorry, Andrew, did I skip over you? No, I have nothing. Okay. So I guess for my select report, I'll mention, so our free cash is like 413,000 and change. So we're gonna put 46,000 <coughs> snow and ice, and you can see that in the motions. <coughs> we're gonna put 80,000 towards highway. Um, and then we have 136,000 to the deficit. That leaves us with roughly 150,000 left over, right around that number, and that will go into our general stabilization, which will put our general stabilization over $1 million. So the only question is whether you want to leave a little bit of free cash so we'd leave unused. In... So you, you, you're starting with the 413 or oh, 400, yeah. right? No, I start with 413. So I would go 135 okay. to the general stabilization, and you're still over the million buck yes, threshold, we are. correct? Yeah, and then that leaves a little extra, um, which they do recommend to leave, so you make sure you have free cash every year. It's a cushion. Yeah, it's just a cushion. Make sure you have it. Okay. Um, and then the other thing, so for the agenda for the next Board of Selectmen meeting, um, I mean to do this every meeting, and I don't. <laughs> but I'm looking for input from all of you if you anything else you want to add. So I thought we would talk about the survey that we sent out to residents. We did that a couple years ago and that was well received, so I thought we should do it again. Um, master plan discussion. So I've read it again and thought that we should maybe think, look at things we want to um, you start acting on. Appointments. So I'd love to get our appointments done before July 1st. <laughs> Um, and then an eight, uh, annual town meeting recap, and then we'll have an executive session that Peter mentioned. Is there anything else anyone would like to add to the agenda? So just, you can let me know or Peter know if you don't but, have anything. But just to set expectations, you, 
you're unlikely to have appointments to make that night. Just yes. an update of, you know, what typically happens is a letter will go out under my name to the people asking if they want to be reappointed, and then they mail them back in, and that's your core of reappointments plus you're seeking, so that, that meaning you're also going to identify where we have vacancies on committees and who might want to participate further. So with that, that appointment list, um, that would include folks that are paid, right? Uh, police, fire? Correct. Yes. Yeah. Building inspector. Can we, get a, can we get a master list of that prior to voting on that to review? Uh. Yeah, so you'll get a list of appointments in your packets before the meeting, which will include like the chief will list the the police chief will list the officers he recommends you all appoint. Gotcha. The fire chief will provide who he's appointed because he's a strong chief. Okay. Uh, you don't. You're not the appointing yep. authority, right? And then separately, all the other groups, the status of who's returned forms back saying, "I want to sign up again. I'd like to be reappointed," or "No, I'm not interested." So there's going to be an additional vacancy plus the vacancies. So with the fire chief, uh, he's the appointing authority. Yes. Would we have an opportunity to express opinions on that prior to him making his final appointment? Uh, I think you would do that separately with him, would be my recommendation. OK. Um, I think you know where I'm going with that one. Yeah, yeah we, don't, we don't do it in the meeting? Uh, I, I think we could, yeah. Uh, but I think to the extent you do. have concerns, yes. I'd bring them up to him in advance. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want to surprise him. Talk about that here. Yeah. Right? Oh, I agree. Yeah. Because you can't talk about people's performance, you know, things well, like that there. Yeah, that's why I was asking if we would we'd get that list in advance. That's kind of where I was going with that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But there have been extensive communications with the chief. Correct. By yours truly, hers truly. Yes. In recent days. Let's just say that. Okay, that's fair. For which you've not had an agenda item. And I'm okay with that. On this one or the bottom of the agenda, okay? Yeah. Okay. All right. So, Matthew, anything for selection reports? Okay. Um, town administrator reports. I don't really have much at this stage. I've been pretty tied up in all this stuff for town meeting. Um, I did meet with the union last police union last week because their contracts up for renewal starting July first. They presented me, and we'll cover that in executive session uh, on the 15th. You'll get in advance of that uh, what they presented plus my recommended counters. We'll meet and talk about that, mm -hmm. and I get your input. But under the, your bylaws, I, you know, I'm the negotiator subject to your approval, but mm -hmm. I always look for your input in that process. So I say, here's what I suggest doing. Do you have any concerns? And that's what we'll do in executive session. Um, and so I'll just leave it at that. Uh, I'm taking a course for the procurement official thing. So I, yesterday I was taking the course and I <laughs> passed two lessons and I put money in the cuss jar because some of it's just gosh awful. 30B. But I'm just saying, so 30B and then all the construction stuff is very complicated. So I'm, I'm halfway through the third course that you have to do. And we'll have that done by the end of the month. And then I send in to certify me. So that process is taking place. The Old Town Hall, you know, we're going to start making a little bit more refined moves of the direction. And when I have a little bit more information on that, I'll come to you. I, I'm just letting you know that it's not a dead thing. It's just moving slowly. It's moving slowly, but maybe it'll start moving a little quicker. Fair. Um, I have one quick question. So for the monies to keep it in free cash, what would be the benefit for that? The, the only thing is, you know, it carries over into free cash next year. So it's just part of it is it doesn't hurt you whether it's here in that here or there other than its accessibility. But I just remember two years ago when the assessor was coming forward for you to set the tax rate, there was an almost oops challenge of exceeding the the levy limit or whatever the heck they deal with. So having had free cash available, which we didn't have at the time, would have allowed a little cushion in that situation. Not that it's anything's done without knowledge of who needs to know, but I'm just saying that uh, there was a stressor, but the stress 
it was principally caused to an error by parties making the stuff, I guess. So we yeah, were so we wound up okay. But had we not been without free cash that wasn't used, we would have had to have had a town meeting mm -hmm. to fix the problem. Because when, <clears throat> when we were in the old building and um, uh, the, the boiler was like the demon sucking cash out of us constantly. <laughs> and if we didn't have the free cash, we would have had town meetings every other month mm. to, to fix the boiler, fix the... So that that's all. It's just readily accessible rather than going through a... But it can't be just spent at will. Mm. And we're only talking 10 or 15 grand like it's, here yeah, anyway. 13. <clears throat> it's not a huge... Yeah, 13,000. No. And that's... Um, Aubrey also would... I don't know if you remember this, but she would always talk about... When you do this, she would she would put all, everything into accounts, but she would leave a cushion. She actually left quite a bit more. It was usually like thirty to forty thousand, mm -hmm. just in case because next year, say something went over budget, then we have that. Yeah. So then the free yeah. cash would be like next year would be like twenty two thousand or whatever. So like Roland said, you have that money available. And I did read that in the finance committee handbook also, which is stimulating reading, um, <laughs> that you should have some. Like a like something left. So and they say if you want to put everything into your accounts, you can. But then when you need it, then you have to have a town meeting and and pull it out. Yeah. So so at the end of this year, we'll have some free cash generated in part by uh, Tri County, where we budgeted for three students and transportation, but we have none. So that's going to go into some free cash determination. But that does raise uh, a point that I should have made earlier. The one oops that could get us, bite us in the budget butt, if you will, um, would be Norfolk Aggie, for which I believe I've been prudent, but I've reached out to them again to get their sort of latest of what would they project as number of students. I don't have that response back generally this time of year. Last year, they weren't able to give me much more information than I'm using. So that's one where if we wind up in the fall that they've got two more students there, That's there might be a special town meeting for that, you know, or we, or, or, or somewhere along the way there would be, not immediately because we have enough funding in the budget to pay the bills as they come due, but we'd have to supplement it by a fall town meeting. You follow me? Yep. 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 That happened. That exactly that right? happened. <laughs> in late August. Oh, by the way, it's going to be whatever it was, yes. five instead of three, or whatever yeah. the number was, but yeah. they added two to us. And that, that was like That's a crusher. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's very hard to yeah. project that. Halfway wall. through the first part of the budget. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I just so, point that out as uh, yeah. <clears throat> so, a challenge. Yeah. Um, items not reasonably anticipated 40 hours prior nope, to meeting? I have nothing. Okay. So our next regular meeting will be the, well, potentially it could be the Finance Committee public hearing on Thursday, if we have a quorum there. Um, uh, but our next definite meeting will be Monday, May 1st for the annual town meeting. Eighth, That's yeah. today. Sorry, May 8th. I don't know why I read it May 8th, May 1st. May 8th, it says May 8th. May 8th will be the annual town meeting and May 15th will be our next regular Real meeting. Real regular meeting. Real regular meeting, yes. thank you. All right. All right, looking for a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Any discussion? All those, in, well, seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Roland? Aye. Richard? Aye. Andrew? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Oh, less than an hour.